Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Shrini here. And if you're new to this channel, I would like you to just subscribe to this channel. You'll be able to find good videos on this particular channel with respect to Java, Python, Selenium, API automation. I'll be starting soon. And even robotics versus automation is already there. So let's look into today's topic. So today's topic is all about exceptions propagation in Java. So we have come across this term exceptions a lot in Java and it's such a key topic that we need to know how to do exception handling in Java, but not just exception handling, even in a situation where we might get a scenario that one exception might lead to another method giving exception and so on. It could become like a chain that exception is getting, you know, called on and it's just getting stacked on one top of each other. So how do we handle such kind of exception, which is getting propagated from one point to another point in Java? It's a very key topic and even interviewers today, they have a key eye on this exceptions handling and how good a programmer is on doing exception handling. So we're going to look at a practical example of how to handle exceptions propagation in Java. So let's get into the practical part. So I've created a class of check exceptions propagation. So I'll be just creating few methods now in Java. So I have used static for the main. So I have to create a method of static if I don't want to create any object. So hope you have understood my concept on static keyword. If not, just go over my Java tutorials on static. So let's create a method M1 and let's just create few more methods to see this example. Right. Let's call it as M2, M3 and M4. You can also do method overloading for just for the sake of simplicity. I've taken four different method names. Uh, so let's just have a look what we are going to do here. We are going to call M2 from M1. M2 is going to call M3. And M3 is going to call M4. So it's like a chain of methods calling each other. And finally, in M4, we are going to do something. Now I'm just going to keep it very simple. I have already talked about the different ways of doing exception handling in Java through throws keyword to throw keyword using try catch or try catch finally or try finally. These are the different methods of doing exception handling in Java. But for this example, I'll be taking the use of throw keyword. I'm just going to throw exception. Now, as the name suggests of this Java file, I'm talking about checked exceptions here. So just to give a quick recap about what is checked exception, checked exceptions are the ones which are going to be thrown at compile time. So what are the different ways or what are the different exceptions which come under check? So we have one example of file not found exception, right? So this is a syntax, how we have to throw a checked exception. I've taken an example of check exception, which is file not found. If I do a mouse over, or even if I don't do anything, right? You can see it's giving me error at compile time itself. That is the basic example that it's a checked exception because it has to be handled at compile time. So let me import this file not found exception. Still the error does not go. The reason is because it is asking you to handle it either through throws declaration at the method level or you can do try catch. Now I don't want to do a try catch locally within this method right now. So I'll go for the fix given for throws. Right. But it has led to an exception on its calling method. See M3 is calling M4. So M3 is also not able to handle it. It is again giving you a suggestion. Either you use throws declaration or you use try catch. Again, I'll go for throws. So this is the exception propagation I was talking about. So from M4, the exception has propagated to M3 and it was not able to handle it to try catch. So it has basically thrown it file not found exception. Now M2 has to do the same. It has to go for file not found exception. So it's going to throw as well. It's not handling here through catch clause. Now M1 as well, it has an option now, either it can catch the exception here or it can throw file not found exception. I'll go first now for throws declaration. So what it means is that all of the methods which have you know led from this M4 have thrown the file not found exception. They have not handled it on their own. So what comes now is that the main method, the calling method, the main method, if it calls M4, without any object because it's a static method, right? It doesn't need any object. Now it has to handle through try catch it. See, it can throws, but then finally, if main method also throws the exception, then that's it. You're going to get the 
program abruptly completed without you know proceeding further with the other statements so let's say they had a statement here like let's say we had statement like next set of statements right let's say we had the statement so this statement would not be able to be executed if you are having the exception thrown here let's for the time being go for the same approach throws file not found exception at the main method level okay so looks wise it appears to be that we have handled the exception propagation and at the main method as well but have a look here that even main is throwing file not found exception we have not handled it through catch clause so let's see how the output appears let's run this program as you could see here that at the main method at this particular line line number 24 it was not able to handle this file not found exception because even main is throwing file not found exception so it's not a way of completely catching the exception right so it's going to anyways lead to abruptly completing execution of a program in between it's not able to complete your execution because this statement got skipped because your program abruptly got completed here so you have to handle it in the main method of course on the other methods if you did not want to handle it, that's fine but you should be handling in your main method so how do we do that you can do it using try catch now it's able to catch the file not found exception we will put a meaningful message so that the user knows what is the cause of exception so i'm going to copy this exception here always make a practice to mention which method you got the exception not just the exception part mention where you got the exception that way when you have your program abruptly completed or let's say there was some exception encountered you would be able to find out where exactly which path was the exception found out so i'm going to use this object e e dot get message you can also use stack trace to get the complete stack trace and now you should be able to even see this statement also get executed so let's put some finally clause as well So that's all about it let's run this program now so as you could see we did get file not found exception right and uh, so let's just try to use some other method this did not give us any meaningful message let's try to get stack trace okay and let's run this program yeah so even this is not giving us any meaningful message so we can just try out the different methods which are available so let's try for get cause forget localized message so you could use any of the methods in the exception so it's not able to get the exact reason why this exception was thrown because we have explicitly thrown the file not found exception from our previous methods so it has finally executed the statement nothing to do in finally and then it has executed the system total printer and statement next set of statements so this is how you do the exceptions propagation in Java and handle it when it is a checked exception. So now let's do one thing. Let's talk about the unchecked exception or the runtime exception. So I'm going to create unchecked exceptions propagation. Similar example, but here we are going to talk about not the file not found exception. So I'll just remove all of this for now. I don't want to handle any of these for now. I'm just going to keep it the similar example. Okay. And now instead of file not found exception, I am going to go for some runtime exception. Let's say arithmetic exception. Right. So it has thrown arithmetic exception here. Now just see the difference. What is happening here? compared to in the checked exception propagation. So I don't want to do this any of the handling right now. I just want to keep it simple. Yeah, I'm just calling m4 method. Look at the difference now. I'm calling m4 method from main. Now in the m4, I'm just throwing a runtime exception through throw keyword. But there is no forceful error given by the compiler that you have to handle the exception here. There is no force here, right? that you have to handle the exception here by using throws keyword or try catch. No, because it's a runtime exception. So that is the difference that runtime exceptions need not be 
handled as we were doing in the case of checked exceptions, right? For check, we had to do either throws clause or try catch. So here, at the time of running the program, you would encounter that it has, you know, stopped at this particular method, basically in M3 method because M3 is calling M4. Uh, so let's do one thing. Instead of calling M4, we will call M1 here. And similarly here, we will call M1 because we want to start calling our parent method first, then it will call M2, then M2 will call M3, M3 will call M4. And similarly in M4, you would be seeing the exception. So let's run this program again to see if there is any difference. No, there is no difference in the way of execution. It has led to the same result. Now let's come back to this example, unchecked exceptions. Now I'm throwing a runtime exception. It's always good to mention comments actually. And also it will be a good practice just before method, you can mention the documentation, like who is the author, the date when this particular method was written, what is the purpose, why have you written this method. This is always a good practice when you are working on a big project with different team members. It's always a good practice so that they know why this method was used. So now I'm throwing an arithmetic exception in M4 and main is calling M1. So M1 will lead to M2, M2 will lead to M3, M3 will lead to M4. So far there is no exception encountered. Now in M4, you are throwing an arithmetic exception. So it's going to be thrown here in M3 because M3 is calling M4, but M3 is not catching the exception of arithmetic. Neither it is throwing this arithmetic exception. So what it would mean is at the M3 method itself, your program is going to be abruptly stopped. So let's look at that. And this sysout statement is not going to be printed. So let's run this program. So as you have seen the stack trace here that it has led from main to M1, M1 to M2, M2 to M3, M3 to M4, right? So this is how the stack trace ball goes all about. At M4 method where the exception was thrown, it was not able to handle it through catch clause or throws clause. So it has abruptly stopped in between and this statement could not be executed. So to handle this, you could either use throws clause here. So I'm going to use throws now. And let me just use throws in this particular example. And in main, instead of using try catch, let me first show you through throws. So again, the execution will be stopped now in main method at this particular line because you are throwing it again in main method. You are not handling it through catch clause. So let's run this program. So as you could see now at line number 33, it has given you the exception because it is not able to catch it. So now we will comment out this part. We will put this into try catch. You can take the entire block into try catch or if you want, you can keep this out separate. It's up to you. Okay, so that's it. So let's run this program. Now it should be able to handle this exception because I have mentioned arithmetic exception type. Now this is the important part guys. So let's pay attention to this part. I am throwing arithmetic exception here. If you try to catch some other exception, let's say null pointer exception, right? Which is not thrown by your previously called methods. Then you are not able to catch the exception. Still, you will be getting similar output like what we are seeing right now. So let's run this program again. See, because you have not caught the arithmetic exception, you're not handling the arithmetic exception. You have to catch the same exception type. Or if you don't know how to do that, just mention its parent exception type that is exception. So now I'm going for the child type that is arithmetic. And now let's run this program. That's it. So we have handled the exception now and it is not leaving or giving any error in between. It is also able to execute your other statements in the program. So this way through exception handling and through exception propagation of both checked and unchecked, you can continue your program execution without stopping in between. So hope you like this video and I'll be uploading few more tutorials on Java. So stay tuned. And if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, I would strongly recommend go ahead and subscribe. You will be getting a lot of free video tutorials on Java, Python, Selenium in future. Thanks a lot.